Hi, I'm Brad, and I cannot be stopped. Please stop me. In my hand here, I am holding a headset that is powered by the Qualcomm XR2 Snapdragon chip that is built purely for VR standalone devices and is in pretty much in all of them that at least are standalone. For many, many months, I kept reporting that there seemed to be some sort of tweak chip in the works. Uh, at one point, I said in a Cambria leak dump that I referred to it as the XR2 Gen 1 Plus or something like that, but I never had concrete evidence or information on what a updated XR2 chip would be and what they would do to get more performance. Obviously, the hope is that they would take something like a newer node chip, like something more recent on the uh, TSMC 4 nanometer node, rather than the 7 nanometer node that the XR2 is built on based on the 865 Snapdragon chip. Yeah, I'm a nerd. But there's been evidence for a while that Qualcomm was working with multiple vendors to actually do an updated version so they can squeeze more performance out of the XR2 chip in some way. And I finally got very good information from a very good source on what that is. This mystery has actually gone back probably since April of this year for me, and I couldn't really figure out exactly what they were doing. On the Qualcomm website, yeah, I know I'm saying Qualcomm, and I know it's Qualcomm, but, you know, engagement. There was a little drop-down menu on the ARXR pages that referred to an SXR 2150P chip. And well, the XR2 that we have in the Quest 2 is an SXR2130. So we knew there was a new chip, and when you click that link, it brought you to a page that did not exist. And when I tweeted about it, they deleted that accidental navigational page link from the website. That kind of made them look a little more guilty, to be honest. And after we saw that reference, we started looking at import records, and we're seeing that Qualcomm was sending things back and forth from Taiwan, even some things sent to vendors such as Facebook. And that's where we were able to start getting uh, actual RAM numbers for Cambria because we saw that they were sending versions of it that was interposed with a 12 gigabyte LPDDR5 RAM that the Cambria is almost 100% going to be included with. So the disappointing thing is they're likely not going to be updating the nanometer node or the processes to get a huge benefit out of performance just by making a more expensive chip. They are doing something very different to squeeze more performance out, but I'm going to explain it in the most common way I can because there's multiple things going on here. First of all, you might have already heard that the Quest 2's XR2 is already very underclocked because the, th the thermals are basically too high for it to run at 100%. There's a dinky cooler in here, and that's kind of actually half the story. Similar to the 865 that the XR2 is based on, they are actually doing a package-on-package -package system for the RAM with the actual SoC itself. So if you opened up your Quest 2, you would see something either like on the XR2 that was relating to Samsung or SK Hynix, these RAM developers, that would show, okay, everything is bundled on one package, one chip. Now, the reason why companies do this is because it's the most cost-effective and cheapest way to build a chip with RAM and everything on board on one stacked group of layers. However, when you're already having issues with thermals, Kind of putting the RAM and the actual uh, SoC together on one chip packaged together actually is even worse for thermals than doing it the separated way with maybe an interposer or something differently on the board. And actually, that's kind of what they're doing with this new updated XR2 chip that is actually going to be releasing with Cambria for the first time. I've been told that it's likely going to be available for any vendor that wants to use this updated XR2 chip so if you think about that, I've been told that the gains would be about 30% higher having the RAM separated on the chip than if it would be same as this. We've also heard some ballpark numbers that if uh, the Quest 2's XR2 wasn't underclocked, you'd get even more performance with better cooling. Because thermals and cooling and all that stuff does have a big benefit to performance. This also is a great benefit because if you separate the RAM off the chip, that allows companies to decide exactly how much RAM they want in their devices and do more customization there without spending too much money to redesign a new chip. So let's say you're something like a Valve Deckard that has proof uh, in some sort of leak from a Steam OS Deckard.python file that had clearly Snapdragon cores on there, but you don't need all the RAM because you're not using that ARM SoC to do uh, standalone custom games for it, but to use it to connect to a PC for onboard reprojection and have a, you know, a lot of other things, well then this might be a chip you might want to use and just put less RAM because you won't be using that RAM for at least 
onboard gaming with the ARM chip. But if you're something like Cambria, which is trying to be a high performance chip, uh, you want to pack in the most power and get the most cooling and the most benefits, maybe two fans on board, which is what we've data mined from Cambria thus far, then yeah, separating the RAM, bumping that RAM up to 12 gigabytes LPDR5, and then also having the chip run at its best will give you a suitable benefit. So this brings us to Eureka 865, which I reported before was called the Quest 3, or at least a prototyping toward the Quest 3. We did not know why it was called Eureka 865. It made us all very nervous that this new chip that was probably going to release with the Quest 3 would be based on the Kona chip or the 865 that the XR2 already is. But having this information, knowing how they're going to pack more thermals, more performance uh, out of the new XR2 chip, it is very clear to me that the Quest 3 is using this same chip that is going to be in the Cambria this year. Yeah. So what do you think all about this? Are you disappointed that there's probably not going to be a no uh, nanometer node change? They're still using a Kona-based chip? Or are you just happy to see what this new chip with eye tracking and all this other better uh, cooling and better thermals and everything and better customization from vendors will do? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like it, spread it around, and bradsmells.com slash Patreon. All these fine people supported me like $25 plus a month, and I'm very thankful, and I all hope you have a great day, and stay tuned for that mega news video, because there's stuff about Pico, OLED micro displays, and things happening. Bye!